now let us see how the fluoroquinolones act fluoroquinolones can act on the two important enzymes they can inhibit the topoisomerase 2 enzyme this enzyme is also called as dna gyrase and fluoroquinolones can also inhibit the topoisomerase 4 enzyme this topoisomerase 2 is more important than the gram negative bacteria whereas topoisomerase 4 is more important than the gram positive bacteria we can assume that the new generation fluoroquinolones can have more activity towards the topoisomerase 4 so that they are having the extended activity towards the gram positive bacteria but still the new generation fluoroquinolones are effective against both topoisomerase 2 as well as topoisomerase 4 but what is the role of this topoisomerase 2 and what is the role of topoisomerase 4 so let us see the role of topoisomerase 2 is important in the dna replication so suppose this is the dna gyrase which is expressed like this it can act on the positive supercoil and it can bind to this positive supercoil so that it will cut the supercoil to produce a gap in the supercoil now once this is going to be cleaved it can be rotated and it can be resealed in reverse direction so which produce the negative supercoil so negative supercoil is the relaxed form of the dna and positive supercoil is the strained form of the dna where a topological strain is uh, present during the DNA replication which is relieved by DNA gyrase enzyme in this way DNA gyrase will cause a relaxation of the positive supercoil so DNA gyrase is having the three functions it will cut the DNA it will rotate the DNA and it will reseal the DNA all these functions are mediated by DNA gyrase so if the DNA gyrase is not present DNA replication cannot be proceeded now what is the role of fluoroquinolones now fluoroquinolones can bind to the site where the DNA gyrase is going to bind to the DNA. Now the fluoroquinolones can form a ternary complex with the topoisomerase 2 as well as with the DNA so that they will inhibit the opening as well as closing of the DNA supercoil and thereby it inhibits the relaxation of the DNA supercoil. In this way fluoroquinolones inhibit the DNA replication. Now let us see what is the role of topoisomerase 4. Topoisomerase 4 is important during the release of the daughter DNA. After the replication, the DNA can be present as a catenated, that is a chain forms of the DNA. This strain can be removed by topoisomerase 4. Topoisomerase 4 will release the daughter DNA so that they can be isolated into the new circular DNAs. In this way, topoisomerase 4 produces decatenated DNA. Now fluoroquinolones can inhibit this topoisomerase 4 so that they can inhibit the release of the daughter DNA. In this way fluoroquinolones can inhibit both topoisomerase 2 as well as topoisomerase 4 thereby they can inhibit the DNA replication as well as release of the daughter DNA. Now let us see what are the side effects of fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones generally can cause nausea and vomiting and diarrhea which are commonly observed with most of the fluoroquinolones. And apart from these common side effects, the fluoroquinolones can also produce the headache, dizziness, confusion, lightheadedness. All these are the central side effects are produced by fluoroquinolones. Next one is the phototoxicity. Fluoroquinolones can produce a phototoxic reaction. So whenever these drugs are used for a longer period, the direct exposure of the sunlight should be avoided. And if it is required, sunscreen lotions can be applied in order to prevent the phototoxicity caused by fluoroquinolones but this side effect is not observed with a short term treatment whenever these drugs are given for a long term treatment uh, phototoxicity is one of side effect that can be observed in the patients similarly orthopathy orthopathy is a condition of the erosion of the articular cartilage which can produce the difficulty in the movement of the bones and this side effect is more pronounced in the age group less than 18 years so these drugs should be carefully used in the children less than 18 years and another important side effect is the increase in the QT interval even all the drugs are not increase the QT interval but few of the drugs like the moxifloxin can increase the QT interval which may precipitate the torsade depointes which is a fatal cardiac arrhythmia which should be immediately treated now let us see the drug interactions Fluoroquinolones can inhibit the cytochrome P450 enzyme system thereby they can inhibit the metabolism of the so many drugs and particularly they are having activity against the CYP3A4 which is the one of the 
most abundant uh, metabolic enzyme and they can also inhibit the CYP1A2 thereby they can inhibit the metabolism of the many of the drugs leading to so many important drug interactions. One of the drug interaction is observed with the ciprofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin when it is given with the theophylline. Theophylline is a bronchodilator. When the ciprofloxacin is given with the theophylline, it can inhibit the metabolism of the theophylline, thereby it can lead to the theophylline toxicity. Theophylline is a bronchodilator as well as a CNS stimulant. So it can produce a convulsions in the patients under uh, toxic levels. So when ciprofloxacin is given along with the theophylline, there is a chance of convulsions in the patients which should be avoided. But this interaction is less observed with the new generation fluoroquinones like the levofloxacin and moxifloxacin. And another important interaction is the fluoroquinones can inhibit the metabolism of the other drugs like the warfarin which is one of an anticoagulant, cyclosporin which is an immunosuppressant and even caffeine which is a CNS stimulant. All these drugs can interact with the fluoroquinones as the fluoroquinones can inhibit the metabolism of uh, these drugs. When their metabolism is going to be inhibited, it can lead to the increased uh, toxicity of these drugs. Suppose if warfarin toxicity is increased, it may lead to the hemorrhage in the patient. So whenever these drugs are given, the drug interaction should be thoroughly checked and dosage adjustment should be done in order to prevent the toxic reactions. And another important drug interaction is observed with the drugs like sucralfate and some of the antacids which are having the calcium and aluminum salts and milk which is also having the calcium similarly zinc preparations iron preparations that means most of these uh, uh, divalent and trivalent cations can interact with the fluoroquinolones form a complex and they can inhibit the absorption of the fluoroquinolones so this is not a significant interaction but the bioavailability of the fluoroquinolones is going to be reduced uh, with these type of drugs now let us see how the fluoroquinolones are given Fluoroquinolones can be given by oral route as well as by IV route. All the fluoroquinolones are suitable by the oral route. For example, norfloxine, ciprofloxin, levofloxin, moxifloxin, delafloxin, and gemifloxin. All these drugs can be given by oral route. But under emergency conditions, as well as we have the severe infections, we can give the drugs by IV route. Drugs that can be given by IV route include mainly ciprofloxin, levofloxin, and delafloxin. These three types of drugs can be given by IV route. So that's about the fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones are having the quinoline ring system and a ketone group at the fourth position, fluorine group at the sixth position, and they're also having a carboxylic acid at the third position. And fluorine group can increase the activity of these fluoroquinolones. And based on the development, they can be classified into four generations, first generation, second generation, third generation, and fourth generation. First generation is a nalidixic acid which is not actually fluoroquinolone but it is having an activity against the gram negative infections and particularly it is used in the treatment of urinary tract infections. And second generation drugs include ciprofloxin and norfloxin which are effective against the gram negative infections as well as atypical organisms but they are not effective against the streptococcus and staphylococcus infections. Ofloxin is again a second generation fluoroquinolone which is effective against the staphylococcus infections but still it is not effective against the streptococcus infections and third generation is the levofloxin which is the levoisomer of the ofloxin but now this drug is effective against the both staphylococcus as well as streptococcus infections but third generation drugs are not useful against the anaerobic organisms which is fulfilled by the fourth generation fluoroquinolones so fourth generation include moxifloxin delafloxin and gemifloxin which are effective against the even anaerobic organisms. And fluoroquinolones going to act by inhibition of the both topoisomerase 2 as well as topoisomerase 4, thereby they inhibit the DNA replication as well as release of the newly formed DNA. And fluoroquinolones generally produce the gastrointestinal side effects like the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and they can also produce the central side effects like the headache, dizziness, and confusion. And few other drugs can produce the orthopathy, particularly in the teenagers less than 18 years and they can also produce uh, phototoxicity on long-term uses. Increase the QT interval is one of the important uh, precautions that should be taken with the fluoroquinolones and it is more pronounced with the drugs like the moxifloxin. And fluoroquinolones can produce so many drug interactions because they are going to inhibit the cytochrome P450 system. And finally these drugs can be given by oral as well as IV route and drugs 
like ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin and delafloxacin are suitable by IV route.